What's up guys and welcome to the channel. It's Ioana here, founder and CEO of Supwell and I'm back with another video on the best training shoes for those fall 2023 marathons. We knocked out a bunch of those popular brands but coming in hot today with the top dog or what once was the top dog in the running shoe world, Nike. Now, I came at them pretty hard a few weeks ago around not serving the everyday runner and the competitive endurance athlete with solid training shoes, but there are still a few gems in that rotation that we can get in and use for some quality miles during marathon training. So in this video, I'm gonna highlight a few of those and of course end with that race day pick. Let's get into it. All right, so first up, we got the daily trainer from Nike, and that is going to be the reliable workhorse Pegasus. Now, this thing is the definition of classic. We are on the 40th iteration of the Nike Pegasus. I'm holding the 39 right here, in this beautiful university colorway. It's not the most exciting shoe, but it does have a nice solid covering of rubber to be a really durable option for daily training. And it has this React foam, which while it's not gonna be as bouncy or poppy as something that you might find in the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 or the New Balance Rebel, it is gonna be really sturdy and reliable over those long haul miles. I said reliable probably four times in this description because that really is the key of this shoe right here. Very versatile, it's gonna get you from point A to point B with no problem, and you could use it to go grocery shopping or pick up your kids or go to soccer games and not really worry about it because you're not breaking the bank to pay for it. All right, next up, we've got that speed work and interval training shoe, and that is gonna be the Nike Streak Fly. Now, this is designed by Nike as that 5K and 10K racing option, similar to the Takumi Sen, which we see from Adidas, and the Saucony Sinister, which we see from Saucony, and that CeeLo Road, which we see from Hoka, and all of these shoes are lightweight, lower profile versions of those amped up marathon racers, but they drop the stack height a bit down into that low 30s range or high 20s range instead of having that 40 millimeter stack of foam. In the Street Fly, we see that same Zoom X compound, very soft, very bouncy. So that is a note if you like that soft foam, if you like a bit of ground feel, this is going to be a great shoe for you. But if you want something with a bit more panache and not as much give, not as much ground fill, you might want to go for the Tempo Next Percent. But for most people, the Street Fly is going to be a great option for all those short distance interval training, that 4x800 workout, that 10x400, any of those types of distances where you're going to be going those 5K, 10K paces, Street Fly is going to be a great option. And then for any of those longer workouts where you might be going marathon pace, you can check out that Tempo Next Percent. Though it is three years old, and unless you're a super Nike loyalist, I think there are better options on the market for those longer tempo runs if you look to other brands, but this is a Nike video, so we'll stick to the Nike stable for now. All right, next up, we got that recovery running shoe. What are you gonna wanna do after those hard days at the track? Take it easy, a nice little relaxed run around the hood, and for that, we got the Nike Invincible Run Three. Now this has a 100% Zoomex midsole. It's very soft, very bouncy, very responsive. If you're a fan of the feeling of the Saucony Triumph or the Nike Vaporfly, you will love the Invincible Run. It has all that, but no plate. It's not the most nimble shoe, but if you're using it just for those easy runs, those recovery runs, it's gonna be a really comfortable option. I will say some people have reported weirdness with the fit and also the stability around the heel area, but if you're a huge Nike fan and you really love that Zoomex, this is gonna be a good one for you. You just make sure you spend some time getting those laces locked down exactly right before heading out the door. All right, next up, we got the long run shoe, and I'm gonna highlight a new one here, the Vomero 17. Now, this is a brand new one from Nike that's set to release this fall. It has a dual foam construction, which is all the rage in running shoes these days. We see it in the Boston 12, we see it in the Mach X, we see it in the Convara Pro, and now we're seeing it in the Vomero 17. This has no plate, but it's using Zoom X on the top layer and Cushlon 3.0 on the bottom layer. It's gonna have a nice, smooth, soft, slightly bouncy feel. It is a bit on the heavier side, but if you are doing high mileage weeks during marathon training, and you have those long runs where you're not having big chunks of race pace, then a shoe like the Vomero 17 is exactly what you need. It will keep you comfortable, it will keep you cushioned, and it will keep you rolling along with a nice little rocker when you get tired in the later stages of those miles. Now, if you do have those long runs with big sections of race pace, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that you use the race day shoe, which we will get into in three, two, one. 
Finally, what you've all been waiting for, if you are a running shoe enthusiast, you do not need to guess what this is gonna be. We got the Nike Vaporfly. I'm holding the Next% Percent 2 right here. This is what I use for all of my peak races. I used it for my half marathon earlier this year, and now Nike has the Next% Percent 3, which is the most recent edition of this. It's using the same ZoomX foam that we see in here. They've changed the upper a little bit. They made it a bit lighter. They've changed the way that the foam is shaped a little bit, but it's gonna be that same classic experience that we saw in the original 4% and in this next percent too. This thing is like the McKinsey of race day shoes. You know that saying, nobody ever gets fired for hiring McKinsey? Well, nobody ever regretted wearing the Vaporfly for race day. It works for most runners, unless you have major stability needs, you should be strapping up the Vaporfly if you don't wanna have any regrets. I've sometimes used the Pro 3 or the Takumi Sun for races and I'm like, man, why did I not just pull for the Vaporfly? So don't be like me, pull for the Vaporfly, have no regrets, go chase that PR, and have fun out there in those fall 2023 marathons. All right, guys, there you have it. Those were the best Nike shoes for those fall 2023 marathons. Let me know in the comments if you're pulling for any of these or if you're gonna add any of them to your rotation. As always, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, and I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.